Hi, folks. Uh, thank you for tuning in. I, I do these 10-minute talks every Saturday at 2.30 Central Time. Today, I want to talk about daydreaming. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Scott Giles. I'm a certified consulting hypnotist and a certified coach. My practice here in the Chicago area has been going to its 30th year now. And daydreaming has always been an important thing for me. And once upon a time, in fact, this practice came into existence in part because I spent time daydreaming about how I might someday be in practice for myself doing this kind of ministry. Uh, what is daydreaming? The, the definition is that it's a stream of consciousness detached from exter external events, where your attention shifts to internal realities. Now, hypnotists call that selective attention when you ignore some things and focus on one thing that you choose, your internal reality in this case. This is a state of mild dissociation called the hypnagogic state. Now, years and years ago, psychologists used to argue that daydreaming was a bad thing. Uh, in fact, during the 1950s, uh, child psychologists routinely warned parents not to allow their kids to spend time in daydreaming. But currently, Drs. Gilbert and Kellyworth, in their 2010 study, A Wandering Mind is an Unhappy Mind, uh, published in Science magazine, estimated that people spend about 47% of their time daydreaming. And their argument was that this costs and pro productivity, and the, uh, the, the loss in productivity outweighs any benefits. Uh, much of the way that certain Asian corporations uh, monitor their employees every move and every keystroke uh, and every mouse click uh, to help them with their productivity, not allowing them any downtime at all. But there's a creative side to daydreaming. If you tried to go without sleep, you would go nuts. I mean, you'd, become, you'd go into a, a, a pseudo-psychotic state. We all need downtime to allow our, our nerve cells to recharge. And daydreaming is a way of doing that. Now, the danger of daydreaming is focusing on negative things, things that you're worried about. So instead of, uh, of daydreaming about good stuff, you're daydreaming about bad stuff. That's a terrible mistake. Because when you do that, you change your body's biochemistry. You put cortisol into your, into your bloodstream. It affects everything in your body. It hurts your intelligence. It causes you to gain weight. It, uh, it impairs your immune function. There have been relatively few people who have studied the potential benefits of daydreaming. But if you're daydreaming about positive things, you're certainly not producing cortisol. And we do know that there are some people like Mozart who would, who would daydream about his music and then write it all in first draft. Ralph Waldo Emerson, a, a minister of my denomination, used to write in stream of consciousness in his journals. And then when he had to give a talk or a lecture, he would take pieces out of his journal and assemble them. So his daydreams actually became, he would daydream onto the page in the journal, it would actually become famous works of literature. So daydreaming about positive things is useful hypnotically. Remember selective attention. You're focusing on your internal reality, the hypnagogic state. The moment you've done that, you are in a trance or a trance-like state. Now, hypnotists utilize trance because trance increase, increases receptivity to suggestion. People are, a suggestion is the ability to internalize information from the environment. People are more likely to do that if they're in trance than not. So when you put yourself into a daydreaming state, you're in a hypnagogic state, you are more receptive to suggestion. And you can use that positively by dwelling upon daydreaming about things that are good for you. Now, I know when I was a young person, I used to you know, have daydreams of grandiosity. I was going to be a, a starship commander or whatever. That's not helpful. But daydreaming, daydreaming about things that are of practical, positive utility, that's quite different. Now, 
I use a vision board routinely in my own inner life. And if you don't, I recommend it. Uh, a vision board can be a, a physical thing that you put on the wall, like a cork board, or I personally use a smartphone app, but you put photographs on that board about things you want to bring into your life, even if you're not sure about how you're going to go about doing that. Well, one of the techniques for creative daydreaming that I use is I use my vision board. So I'll put myself into that relaxed daydreaming state, and then I'll get out my vision board, and I'll choose any item, and I'll kind of just let my thoughts drift in that direction. And I don't just imagine myself doing or possessing the item. I, I allow fantasy to run. For example... I'm an ex-motorcyclist. I would like very much to own a motorcycle again. The, uh, so there is a picture of a motorcycle, Harley Davidson, on, my, uh, on my, my vision board. So let me daydream about that out loud for a bit. Well, maybe I don't want a Harley. Maybe one of those shaft-driven BMW motorcycles with the horizontal pistons would be kind of neat to tour on. Maybe a chopper, customized bike like, like I used to ride. Maybe that would be fun. How about a trike? It has a Volkswagen engine in it, three wheels, with a long extended Springer front end. Uh, imagine touring the, the country in one of those. Uh, going to a biker rally like Sturgis in, in August, which is the, one of the biggest biker rallies in the nation. Uh, at Sturgis, there's a famous saloon called, well, there was, it burnt down. I think they're rebuilding it, called Full Throttle Saloon. And it might be fun to imagine how I would design it if I were to do that. And at Sturgis, there are, there are well-known acts like Jackal, a, a heavy rock band that has a following uh, among bikers, or the, uh, the all-girl uh, dance troupe called Flaught. Uh, might be fun to imagine what they would be doing in their routine and what their costumes, or the relative lack thereof, would be like this year. Uh, all of this is coming out of one picture on my, my vision board of a, of a motorcycle. So I'll just spend time with that, letting my nerve cells regenerate, re relax, recharge, programming my imagination, my subconscious mind with things that are related to positive stuff that I want to bring into my life. That's the best way to do it. Just don't make the mistake of daydreaming about the negative. Anything's better than that. Hey, thank you for tuning in. I'll be here next Saturday, same time, uh, with, a, uh, with another topic. And that topic is going to be how not to take responsibility for the feelings of other people. I hope you'll find it of some use. And uh, as always, if you'd like to know more about my work uh, uh, as a consulting hypnotist, specializing in, uh, at this point, oncology, uh, bariatrics, weight management, and uh, a new line we're bringing in, the Hypnotic Enhancement of Fertility, please feel free to let me know. Uh, go to my website. Uh, the, you'll, you can see the, uh, the URL at the end of this video once it's up on YouTube. And uh, I hope to continue these, these talks, and I hope you continue to find them of interest. Thank you.